Let's uh, talk now about maybe the most interesting part of this discussion, which is the Azure Auto Scale. And then quickly go through some of the concepts that we need for Azure Auto Scale. First of all, there's this a virtual machine scale set. And the virtual machine scale set is a uh, not at the same type of object as a VM. You don't take VMs and put them into a scale set. You create the scale set object which contains zero or more instances that are spun up and spun down, either automatically or manually. And typically, this is going to be put behind a load balancer. In principle, it can live independently of a load balancer if you can figure out how to get traffic uh, to it. But I can't think of a good use case uh, for that. But from a logical point of view, this is separate. You create this, and then you load balance to it as an object. And what that means is to the instances. The load balancer is smart enough to understand that, that means it's load balancing to the instances. There's also serverless functions. So Azure is big on pushing its serverless architecture. You see, everything in auto scale is done with API calls. We make API calls to the FMC, and we make API calls to the Azure infrastructure. So in theory, we could spin up a Linux VM, and we could uh, run a, a, a Python on it and write Python code that would do everything. But that's not where Azure wants you to go. Azure wants you to create that code, but then run it in what's called a serverless infrastructure, which is really just servers that are hidden. Obviously, there's some server there running your code. But they maintain the server. They upgrade the server. They tax the server. And you know this could have some big benefits. I'll give you you know one example uh, that we uh, do is if you can you can install a Windows box and make it an AD server, or you can simply use the serverless AD server. In other words, you can use AD as a service. You can have a SQL database as a service. So uh, and this is how what we do the auto scale. We actually send the uh, we actually build the code. And it's actually written in C sharp, uh, which is, uh, and uh, we give the source code to the customer so they can compile it in Visual Studio. They can even tweak it, and so forth. So, and then we upload those DLLs, all the libraries, and 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 uh, some some JSON that tells Azure how to talk to these functions, and uh, and we never actually have. The API calls running from a VM that we built. It's all running from the Azure infrastructure. Okay, so and it's not as bad as it sounds, but it's actually a lot of work. So the uh, other thing you have to understand is the Azure logic application, and uh, that is uh, basically a uh, uh, run by a trigger. The trigger then determines what functions to run that you've uploaded. And uh, you can create these workflows with if statements and switches and loops and so forth. Uh, and so, for uh, example, we use a trigger that runs every five minutes by default, and uh, we'll call the Azure, uh, uh, call the functions that do the API calls. We run the memory, CPU usage, and and so forth. Okay. So moving uh, to FTD and ASA auto scale, basically all that we added in. 6.7 was the capability of doing a uh, memory as well as CPU. There are two policies. Do you use the worst, uh, 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 the worst instance, or do you use the average to determine whether to scale up? And you, if either memory or CPU uh, is being utilized, then you'll get, uh, uh, then you'll scale up. But you need both to drop to the low water mark before you will scale down. And so that's pretty pretty straightforward, I think. The uh, uh, architecture is also a little tricky. CPU metrics are available from Azure, but the memory me uh, metrics, uh, you have to do API calls to the FMC. And FMC doesn't do some sort of running uh, history. So you can't say, I want to know the average there's no API call that will tell you the average memory over the last five minutes. So you're pretty much stuck with um, 
instantaneous snapshot, and that's why we don't let you do as much with memory. You can't just use memory. We only let you use combination of memory and CPU, and uh, you can't scale in just because of memory. Uh, and uh, uh, you you have to have both. But you can scale out if you see memory even at any instance being super high. Yeah, that's a reason to scale out. But you can't really scale in because low memory at any given instance is not an indication. Now, with ASA auto scale, I don't really want to say much about it. It's not really ready for prime time. In particular, it, can, it isn't designed to handle the VPN or a VPN use case. So, uh, well, you know, it says what good is it uh, at this point. But it's phase one. We're getting there. Uh, and it just uses CPU. And it just uses, it just loads configs. You have a config on a web server, it'll, you point at the web server, it downloads that config when it spins up the new instance. And you do uh, the IP configuration with DHCP. Very, very simple, but it's really not uh, particularly useful in this uh, 9.15.1 release. Okay, so hopefully you've seen, uh, you've gained a little bit more understanding and maybe I've intrigued you enough that you want to take the course. What I'd like to do is use the remaining time to do a uh, a quick uh, uh, a quick uh, demo of uh, just to sort of show you auto scale because I think it's rather daunting. And maybe if you see it, it, you'll realize it's not that bad. So here we see that for some reason our policy isn't up to date on uh, one of our devices and. Uh, a couple other things that seem wrong. We don't have any uh, traffic. And if you look at our uh, virtual machine scale sets, it looks like um, with, with no traffic in our test bed, it looks like we've got three instances running. So it, it doesn't seem to be tearing down instances right. And I'm going to show you how to, how to uh, troubleshoot this. But first, I want to show you something simpler. Uh, if you set up a web server as a virtual machine scale set, then scaling is very easy. You just go in to the scaling, and you can scale up, scale down manually, or you can create custom uh, auto scale. And uh, you can, uh, uh, for example, you can choose, I don't know what's, you can, uh, here we go. You can add a role, and your roles can be based upon a lot of things, including the, uh, uh, the uh, here we go, CPU, number of connections. You know, uh, this is great. So your, your first impression might be, I get it. I, I, see what, I see what you're getting at. We have this virtual machine scale set uh, for our FTDs, and all we have to do is to configure auto scaling is to go uh, to scaling and um, what? I thought we were doing auto scaling. Okay, that's the problem. The, uh, the built in auto scaling capability that I showed you with that web server, which makes it super easy and you can do a lot of things, is not available for your custom uh, machine. It's like firewalls. So we're not using. That this the and, and therefore it is more complicated. So where should I begin? Well, I could overwhelm you with this, and I just only have like about six minutes. But I'll show you this. Uh, we can go to we start with the logic app. This is what's run every five minutes, and uh, this determines the uh, 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 this determines the uh, uh, the handles the auto scale. As you can see, it's failing. So let's actually look at it, um, and you can actually see. Sorry, let's look at this, and you can actually uh, sort of see the flow chart, uh, and you can actually see what you do in each of the branches and so forth. Uh, uh, but it's stopping really. This is one of the places where it may stop, and this suggests a configuration, basic configuration error. Okay, so. Let's go to uh, to the function app, and because uh, it's calling this this function app, 
And the function app is a collection of functions, and in particular, uh, they have a bunch of parameters. And if we go to configuration, we can see these parameters. Oh, oh by the way, what was this issue? Uh, I should have read the issue. Uh, the issue here is, uh, I knew it by memory, that's right. Unable to get policy ID from policy name. Well, that's weird, because we got our policy. Our policy is called Auto Scale Access Control Policy, but maybe that explains why it's not applying it. Okay, good. Again, this is starting to make some sense. So here are our parameters. You can see our scale up, scale down, uh, our you know scaling policy. What you know the fact that we're using uh, uh, CPU and memory. You can check all that stuff. But there's, we're getting a problem with the policy name. Oh, here we go. Policy name. Oh, I left out the e. There we go. That was the mistake. Okay. Now what we could do. Uh, is forget to save it. I've done that before. Uh, and uh, we could wait five minutes. But we really don't have, we don't, we don't quite have five minutes. So the good news is we don't have to wait uh, if we're troubleshooting. Uh, we could um, just go back to our logic app and we could simply run it again. So we're going to just manually do the trigger. And uh, what you're going to see is it should uh, show, uh, let's see, run, run, run and trigger. Uh, I successfully did that. Here we go. I probably now read it twice because I was impatient. And now we can actually see it going through the workflow and uh, see uh, if we've solved our problem. And we can see that we got past the configuration. Good. Our passwords are right, names of the policy, all that stuff. Basically, but now we're running into another issue. And this is, by the way, I'm purposely choosing the two that I ran into the most when I was, as I've been testing it. The configuration, basic configuration, and the scale manager. That seems, if I get past the auto scale managers, they seem to work. It says the memory metrics, threshold, scale out threshold is less than scale in. Okay. Okay, so let's go back here and I, I'm trying to convince you that with all this jargon, it's not that hard to actually troubleshoot. Here are our memory thresholds. And if we look at our scale out, it's 70. And if we look at our scale in, um, uh, I'm sorry, that's our scale in. And if we look at our scale out, it's 10. Okay, it looks like we got those backwards. So let's do this one 70, okay? Uh, so if we get over a 70 threshold, uh, we're going to scale out, and we're going to get over t uh, under 10 uh, because uh, we're going to get start tearing things down. Okay, there we go. Uh, we made that change. We saved it. And now I want to show you, although I might not have time to run it, but uh, I, can, I can show you on one that I've already run. Let's, uh, let's uh, run it again. So we go to the, uh, and we run the trigger. And we, uh, uh, what we're going to show, although it may, like I said, it'll take some time, it will now see. I removed the two errors uh, that I have uh, from there. And, uh, but it's going to take a bit of time. The, uh, but it's going to check the minimum configuration that succeeds. Maybe we'll just, yeah. Uh, let, me, let me just go uh, show you the other bit of the troubleshooting. Uh, so the, the last thing is it will succeed, but it won't do anything. <laughs> and, uh, oh, here we go. You see, it said it went this direction and no action. So wait a minute, I don't have any traffic going through my firewall. Why didn't it, and I've got three of them running. Why isn't it scaling down? Okay, so we have to dig a little deeper because there's no failure. Uh, and, you know, the... Uh, the the uh, the app uh, actually succeeded is succeeding uh, it, it's successful uh, but uh, here's the trick so we here there's, I just want to go to one more level let's actually go uh, to the function app right oh that's the function app sorry went one level too high let's go to the uh, uh, let's go to the uh, functions. And it's that function that always is going to give you trouble, uh, it seems to, uh, is that auto scale manager. 
And in particular now, if we look at this, we can go drill down. And this is about as much as I've had to do to try to get this working. We, uh, we drill down to monitor, and we can actually see a detailed log from each deployment. And, and here we see, here are the thresholds, uh, and basically a scale out is less than, oh, that's, that's a different run. Um, uh, but what we will see, if I can find the right run, I guess it hasn't logged it quite yet, uh, 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 and I might just say it. What, we, what we'll see is it will actually report the uh, statistics. I could probably show you at least that the statistics are being reported uh, in, in, the, in the log. So in the log, it will report the statistics and you'll actually be able to see for any of the runs what the threshold was set to. Um, and uh, and uh, you could actually see that the problem is even our, uh, uh, and, and what the CPU usage is, what the threshold is, and so forth. And what you would actually then see is that our CPU usage, here's, here's, here we go, our, uh, our, CP, our memory threshold seems to be um, this, this is still from the older run. Uh, we'll find out that our memory is 20%, even on a on a uh, firewall that's that's uh, not doing anything. And we set our scale in to 10%. So we better set it to more like 25, 30% if we expect these firewalls to be torn down. So uh, the uh, drilling down to the logs is about as much troubleshooting as you have to do. Very, most of the other troubleshooting is provided by the uh, logical app and the information you get by looking at the um, at the uh, workflow. And with that, I'll conclude my uh, presentation. So thanks. Appreciate your time today.